Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin news and specifically about Bitcoin and following the smart money, i.e. whales. Now, if you understand the cryptocurrency market, you know that in the past, it's been driven mostly by retail investors. But a little by little, by it's been gradual, it's been a little bit slow, but big money, whales, are getting involved and they're gradually making a change and a difference in the, in the cryptocurrency industry. So let's get into this. Should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? That's what this channel is all about. We want to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. I'll tell you what, there's nothing more than I, that I hate than losing money on an investment. Unfortunately, with cryptocurrency, to a certain degree, that's part of the game, so to speak. But we want to help you avoid that as much as possible. So tell me what, will you help us out? I need your help. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash the like button. Look, it really, really does make a big difference. So I'm not a financial advisor. My background's computers. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. And as any YouTuber, you should take my opinion with a grain of salt. Go research what I'm about to tell you. I'm gonna give you links to each of the articles that I show you. I don't cover the articles in depth. I recommend you go read them and get more information. And then I recommend you go and do Google searches to find more information about what those articles spark as far as interest in you. Because when it comes to cryptocurrency, I'll tell you what, there is a huge amount of information that you can learn. It's, it's like going down the rabbit hole in Alice in Wonderland. The thing never, never ends. You can constantly find something new, something you never heard, something you hadn't seen before. Now, as always, cryptocurrency does involve substantial risk of loss. Now, any investment does, but cryptocurrency is more volatile than most investments. So read the rest of this paragraph. It'll help you out with any investment. The most important thing is to keep your family safe and secure financially um, and, and don't overdo it. And so that's really what this paragraph is about. It's good advice in anything that you're investing in, whether it's your your uh, uh, best friend Joe who has a crazy idea for a business or cryptocurrency or something else entirely, stocks or rental properties or who knows what. So let's address the elephant in the room. What is the smart money? Let me give you kind of a, a little bit of a story slash example. Let's say that you work for Harvard. You're in the endowment fund group. The endowment fund group has over $39 billion with assets under management. Now, they didn't always have $39 billion. They started out with several hundred million in the 90s and 80s, and they've been able to grow that nest egg into $39 billion. So here you are, you're in the Harvard Endowment Fund, and they're talking about cryptocurrency. Do you notice what I just said there? They're talking. Now, for a retail investor, if I'm gonna buy Bitcoin, I probably didn't talk to anybody. I probably just went out to a website, pulled the trigger, spent a little bit of money, bought some Bitcoin. Because it's my money and I don't need anybody's permission to spend it. But when it comes to the Harvard Endowment Fund, it's not my money and they do need somebody's permission to spend it or invest it. And before they get that permission, they're gonna have a lot of conversations. They're gonna do a lot of research. They're gonna have, uh, they're gonna spend money to learn more and investigate long before a dime is ever invested. And so we call that smart money, not because they always make the perfect decisions, but rather, because they're spending a large, I mean, if you're gonna spend a couple of million dollars or a couple of hundred million dollars or a couple of billion dollars on an investment, 
you're going to spend some money checking it out first. Now, when it comes to uh, large institutions, large amounts of money, there's rules, regulations. They have to have certain safety nets, certain insurances. There has to be custody. I mean, it's a complicated mess, quite frankly. And so they end up getting lawyers involved and they have to do a lot of research into the legalities of things. You know, is this, is this company, this institution that we're thinking about buying a, a, a million or a hundred million dollars worth of Bitcoin from, are they reputable? Uh, have they met all of their uh, legal requirements? Are they a regulated en uh, entity, et cetera, et cetera? And so there's a lot of thought, a lot of talk, and actually even a lot of money that's spent before they ever make an investment into something like Bitcoin. Now, when it comes to endowment funds like Harvard, they've been investing in Bitcoin since the 2018s and some of them earlier than that. In 2019, there was a study done and over 150 institutions were talked to and almost 90% of them either already were in Bitcoin. In fact, I think the number was somewhere in the high, the mid or high 80s. Uh, that were actually had Bitcoin in their possession and uh, almost all the rest of them had plans on getting into Bitcoin in 2019 and early 2020. And so the smart money is whales and they're, and they're called the smart money because of the work and the, <clears throat> and the work and, and the investment and the conversations that go into investing. Well, let's take a deeper dive and take a look at what the smart money has been doing in the last couple of weeks. So this was an article, as you can see, that, was, that came out seven hours ago. Grayscale's crypto fund grows by $1 billion in just 11 days. Wow. They bought, now this is Grayscale, and Grayscale can be purchased if you have a stock brokerage account pull up the ticker symbol, GBTC. That's the Grayscale Bitcoin Fund. And their overall assets under management grew by a billion dollars. It's no longer at four billion. It's closer to five. Actually, it's broken five. So this is the Second, the, the, the quarter two investment report highlights from Grayscale. I'm not going to cover all the details in this other than the ones that I highlighted in yellow. And you can see the bottom line is 84% of this $1 billion, 84% of it came from institutions. 85% over the last six months. And over the last 12 months, that figure was 81%. Now, at the time that this report was printed, they had $4 billion assets under management. But with them adding $1 billion in 11 days, that $4 billion has now increased to $5 billion in assets under management. Now, think about that for a second. In 20, in, in the last 11 days, sorry, the 20 doesn't make sense. My mind just kind of froze for a second. In the last 11 days, They've increased this by 25%. $1 billion represents 25% of this fund. Now that should tell us something huge. In the last 11 days, institutions have jumped in faster than they have in the several years that Grayscale has been around. I don't know the exact length of time. I think Grayscale's been around for about four years or five years. So it took four or five years for them to get to four billion and 11 days to go from four billion to five billion. 11 days to have a 25% increase in assets under management. Uh, I mean, that, that's uh, literally, that's huge, huge, huge news. And that's huge news in terms of institutions and institutional investors. I mean, that should make your bells start ringing loudly. The big money, the smart money, the whales are aggressively getting involved in Bitcoin. 
And so while some of the past all-time highs were pushed up by retail investors, we're seeing that the smart money is going to push it up very quickly. Let's take another look at a, at a different area of what the smart money is doing. Have you heard of the backed exchange? If you have not heard of the backed exchange, the backed exchange is a, a, uh, uh, it's, it's a, it's a company that was set up by the company that owns the New York Stock Exchange, and they own a whole bunch of other exchanges around the world. They're a $6 billion corporation, so they're huge. They're very big. Um, I should stop. I don't know why today I'm using the word huge. It just kind of stuck with me for some odd reason. Anyway, so you've got a, a conglomerate of, of, of the New York Stock Exchange owners, Microsoft and Starbucks, all three teamed together to create the backed exchange. Now, while they built an exchange and a custody service for Bitcoin that's designed for institutions, in fact, if you're not an institution, you can't get on their platform and buy and sell Bitcoin. You can't buy their futures. You have to be big money. 100% of what's going on on the backed exchange is big money, is smart money. And the backed exchange, and notice this was done six hours ago. I should give you today's date. Today is July 29th, 2020. Um, the smart money did, they broke another record with 11,700 Bitcoin futures contracts traded yesterday. That was huge for backed. So how big? Talk about momentum. We beat yesterday's record with 11,706 backed Bitcoin futures traded today. That's over $125 million of Bitcoin. Now for backed, that is a record high and it's dramatically higher than the amount of money that they've ever done. I'll show you a chart in a second, but we're going to talk a little bit about the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. This is another place where the big boys go to play when it comes to Bitcoin. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange daily volume topped $1.3 billion while open interest, a measure of the total number of outstanding derivative contracts that have not been settled, also soared to $724 million. According to CME data, 25,493 futures contracts were traded on Monday and Tuesdays. Preliminary clout was already over. 20,900 at the time of writing. That is quite dramatic. Those are volumes that they've never seen before. In fact, let me show you how dramatic is it. So here's Bitcoin futures aggregated daily volumes across a whole bunch of different exchanges, including the CME that we just talked about and the backed exchange, which is over here. And I need to get my mouse out of the way so that that goes away. You can see that there's Huboy, Kraken, Okex, and CoinFlex, and quite a number of others. But notice the volume is puttering around, puttering around, puttering around, and then all of a sudden, BAM! It goes from uh, somewhere around 10 billion all the way over 40 billion. So in one day, we saw four times the regular volume. Now this primarily represents institutional money. And so on July 27th, just a couple of days ago, institutional money flooded into Bitcoin. And that's part of why we saw Bitcoin break through the $10,000 barrier and has continued. And so if big money continues to flow into Bitcoin, what do you think is going to happen to the price? Will it flounder at 14,000 or 20,000 or more. How long will that money come in and how far can it push the price of Bitcoin? Those are things that time will tell, but here's the important thing. We've seen a flood of institutional money suddenly coming into cryptocurrency. Now, why is this? Well, one of the reasons, and, and we're never going to know all the reasons because those are private meetings that these guys are having and they've spent all their money figuring out all the regulatory hurdles that they're obligated to go through. But obviously many of those hurdles are now handled. Otherwise, we wouldn't see such a flood of money coming into the market from uh, smart money from the whales. But regulatory clarity leads to surge in institutional crypto investors. In fact, um, 
I don't know how to pronounce this correctly. I think it's Sierra Sun. Uh, if I butchered it, I apologize. Please forgive me. Um, she said, 2020 will be an especially exciting year for the institutional market as compliance and regulation matures. We are already seeing big Wall Street stalwarts like Tower Research, Renaissance Technologies, and some of the world's top hedge funds publicly announce their entry into the digital asset market. Now think about that for a second. These companies aren't going to publicly announce anything until two things happen. One, they've made a firm commitment or have already gotten involved. In fact, most cases, they're not going to make a public announcement until they've already gotten involved. And then two, they've covered all of the regulatory hurdles, all of the uh, investigation, all of the, they've spent all their money checking it out and making that decision. And so while we don't know everything that went into the decision, we can see the actions they're taking because of the information they reviewed. And those actions are as follows. However, these larger institutions will not trust under-regulated digital asset exchanges and we are still five years away from market maturity. So that didn't make sense. But anyway, we can see that um, by this chart, we can see that they're moving in. We can see that they're buying up Bitcoin. And as people have made a big, uh, a lot of conversation over the years, there's not enough Bitcoin in existence. There will never be enough Bitcoin in existence for every millionaire to own one Bitcoin. But what about institutions? There's so many institutions out there, the same can be said about them. So anyway, I'm sorry about the little hiccup there. Uh, but bottom line is institutions are moving in and that is huge for the cryptocurrency market. Now, how can I be of service to you? Do you have questions? Do you have thoughts? Do you have any recommendations? Is there something you'd like to see me do that I'm not doing? Or do you just disagree with something I said? I'd love to hear your polite disagreements in the comment section below. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And hey, do me a favor and have a fantastic day.